Good morning, Karis Bible College. How's everyone doing today? Man, I will go ahead and tap on your neighbor and tell them to get ready, okay? Because today we have Audrey Mack here with us. Audrey is a huge blessing to this ministry. She uh, graduated from Rama Bible College and took the call of God seriously and said yes to God. Isn't that powerful? She said yes to God to go to France and make a huge impact. So her ministry, Go Tell Ministry, her and her husband go out and share the gospel. They go and tell the good news about Jesus. Amen. So can you guys help me in welcoming Audrey with a very warm Karis Bible College welcome? Thank you. One, two, one, two. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, can we give a big hallelujah? I love you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We love you. Thank you guys so much. Hey, before I start, um, I... It, just briefly, you know, you found out that my main mandate, I used to go all over the 1040 window in underground churches and, and places, but uh, since 2007, God narrowed down my vision and called me and told me to go to the French-speaking world, which has about four, between 43 to 49 nations around the world. So I'd like to show you a quick little video to kind of give you a little bit of understanding of what, what, who we are, what we do. Maestro. <laughs> yes. I love you too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Does the AVL have the video? No? Oh. Oh. Well, I guess I'll tell you about it. Too bad because it was really good. Um, so I was telling you there was about 40, 33, 40, uh, nine nation. And those nations are really taken over by Islam, by atheism, and by legalism. You know, sometimes we take for granted in the English-speaking world of what we have available to us, but in the French-speaking world, they do not have that. There is so much, if they get the, 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 the gospel, it's so full of religion and legalism. And so there is work to do. So that's why, and every year we, um, God, God himself is opening doors that we cannot open. Last year we went to four new uh, nations. Uh, this year we are going to four new one. And just recently I was praying for a nation that I cannot give the name because it's a highly dangerous underground. And I was praying for that nation. I had that nation on my heart. And within two weeks, a lady from that nation reaches out to us saying that she has an underground church and with a, a really good group of people. But she said, I kind of need help. Would you be able to, to help me? And I said, and I immediately knew that was the Lord. And so on a regular basis, we are doing Zoom with them. Of course, their faces are not on the screen. Mine is. And I'm teaching them on the Holy Spirit. They all got filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm teaching them on their authority. I'm teaching them. And, and they are like sponges. And so God is on the move. Amen. And God is wanting this gospel of grace and faith to be everywhere in the world. So I, I feel so blessed, amen, that God has connected me with this ministry that has such a revelation on grace. And you are blessed to be here. And that the students, I really want to encourage you to draw. Do, do not take anything for granted, but draw, make an expectation and a demand on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because what you're going to get here, amen, in every little thing, you're going to use it over there. 
it is not just a bunch of stuff to fill your head. It is very anointed. It is very practical. It is stuff that we need to live a powerful life. Amen. To be a witness. So this morning, you know, I want to talk to you about our duty as kings. Because, you know, Revelation 1.6 said that we have been called to be kings and priests unto our God. A lot of time, you know, the church as a whole has understood very well the prince, priestly duty, which is communing with God, worshiping God, praying, interceding. We, have, we know we understand that and we do it very well. When it comes to the kingly duty, which means exercising authority. And that was God's idea from the very, very beginning. Now, all of you, first and second year, I know you were taught on authority. Amen. Uh, and you know, so I'm not going to tell you anything that I know you already know authority. But this morning, what I want to talk about is why, though we know we have authority. You know, we even sang that, that song, speak the name of Jesus over every situation. Speak the name of Jesus over darkness. That is our power of attorney, that name. And in that name, there is all the power of God invested into that name. And that name has been given to us because we are called to be kings, which is, means to rule and reign right here. But why is it that sometimes our authority does not seem to work? You know, uh, sometimes you'll speak to the mountain, command it to be removed, and the mountain is staring you in the face and say, I'm not going anywhere. And we know the power of, of, of Jesus Every, nothing is impossible with that name. But why is it that when we speak, we exercise authority sometimes, it seems like nothing is happening. And we kind of get frustrated, don't we? And so I want to, you know, there are different reasons of why our authority is not working sometimes. But this morning I want to address one. Because, you know, here is the truth. is from the beginning... When God gave authority to Adam and Eve, did you know that that authority uh, uh, was given to men from the beginning? And that authority, true authority, cannot be taken by force. You know that Satan didn't come in the garden, you know, in the form of, of an elephant, demanding, you know, commanding, give me the authority. He didn't. But what did he do? He did it in such a cunning way, underhanded way, that in fact authority cannot be taken by force. It always has to be given or delegated. And we found out that Satan, we find out in 2 Corinthians or in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was being tempted and the devil said, you see all those kingdoms and their authority... I will give it to you if you worship me, for these have been delivered unto me. From the beginning, that authority that was invested into men, Satan didn't take it by force. Men gave it over to Satan. And you see, Satan's strategies have not changed. Today, when your authority is not working, it is not because there is a kink somewhere in that authority because it's powerful. Jesus says, I give you all authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did you know that authority is far superior and more powerful than power? The devil has power. But we have authority, and that authority is superior to the power. But where I want to go to is that Satan, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, became the god of this world, which means that somewhere he got that authority to rule, to reign. Jesus said the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. Amen. So we see that men pretty much gave their authority over to Satan. And today, my friend, things are the same. When your authority that was given to you by Jesus, 
We saw Luke 10, 19, I give you all authority over all the power. Matthew 16, 19, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus has given us, but why is it that that authority is not working? Could it be that somewhere we are just handing it over to Satan and we don't even realize it? Because his strategies are always the same. And you know, there is a verse, if you could look at it with me, in James chapter 1, verse 26. Because you and I, we are supposed to walk in power and in authority, right? And in James chapter 1, verse 26, look at it with me. It says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious, but does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. You know, when I read that verse one time, two words came out of the page. The word bridle and the word vain or useless. And so I went and dug a little further. And I realized that the word bridle, it means to keep under control, to guide, to lead, to maintain and restrain. And the word vain also means void of power, of force, without success or any result. Could it be that if our religion is with that power, that we speak to the mountain and it's not moving, we speak to the sickness and it's staring in the face, could it be that somewhere there is a problem with our tongue? Because you see, God has all power. When God speaks, bam, things move. Hebrew 1.3 says that God holds the whole world is held together by the word of his power. Did you notice it doesn't say the power of his word? As to say his word has some power. No, his word is power. And so right here, God, when he speaks, I mean, you see Jesus, they looked and listened to Jesus and said, his word is with authority. Because they saw that when he spoke, boom, things moved. And why is it that God's word is so powerful? Why is it that God's word has so much authority? Just because he's God? No, because his word has all integrity. When God speaks, he does. I love the word that says in Psalm 138 verse 2, he said that God has magnified his word above all of his name. What does it mean? It means that his word is number one. He would even exalt his word above his reputation. The word even says, listen to that verse in number 23 verse 19. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Has he spoken? Will he not make it good? What is it saying that when God speaks, he's going to do it? Psalm 89 verse 34, God says, My covenant I will not break nor change the word that has gone out of my lips. And in other words, if God is spoken, that's why we can have so much confidence in God's word because his word has all integrity. And I love that the word of God says in Jeremiah 1.12 that God even watches over his word to perform it. And Jesus' word, God's word has so much power because his word has so much integrity. Authority comes with integrity. And that's the reason why when God speaks, things move. You see, that means that if you lose the integrity of your word, 
you're going to lose the authority in your word. After all, Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of our tongue. But if our words lose integrity, our words will lose their authority. You know, in time past, you could just say to somebody, Oh, I give you my word. And it was like signing a contract. Right? Today, I mean... People give their word, they break it, they don't care. They make promises. And do you see what the enemy has done? Because the enemy knew that authority could not be taken by force. He knew that he could short circuit your authority if you yourself chose to yield it to him. And of course, you're going to do it not in an open, blatant kind of way. You, he's going to, because he's so cunning, he's going to manage to have you do it and you don't even know it. That reminds me of a, a place in the Bible in Joshua chapter 9. We find out about the children of Israel. God told them to take the land of Canaan to completely decimate, to destroy every nation on that territory. And so here they go. But all of a sudden, there is a group of people called the Gibeonites. That here they go to Joshua. And they come with, you know, rags on their body, holes in their shoes. Their bread is all moldy. Their, their water skin is all cracked and old. And they come and say, oh, we have heard of the fame of your God. We come from very, very far away. We want to make an alliance, a covenant with you. And the problem, you know what the Bible says, that Joshua did not consult God. And he just believed what they said and gave them his word that he would not destroy them. And then fast forward a little bit, he found out he was duped. But did you notice that Joshua had given his word and never took it back, never broke it? Why? Because he understood that his word was linked with his authority. The integrity of his word was linked with the authority of his word. Are you here this morning? And we find out that later on, fast forward a little bit in 2 Samuel, I think chapter 21, now David is king. And he find out there is a famine in the land. So he's kind of puzzled because he's like, wait, we are your people, Israel, and we are supposed to walk in authority and in power and in the blessings of God. What's going on? He goes to God, and you know what God tells him? It's because of the house of Saul that by zeal has exterminated the people of Gibeon. In another word, Saul, you know Saul who had kind of disobeyed God and was trying to get back in God's good favor. And now he's got zeal. He's thinking, okay, I'm going to go show up God that I'm going to kill people. And he went and killed all the people of Gibeon. And because of that, the whole nation of Israel had lost their authority. And so what did David have to do? He had to go and make it right by having all the, the sons of Saul killed. You see, our word, we take it, the devil has convinced us. That's really his strategy. He has convinced us, I, I, and I'm not saying us, but I'm thinking this generation, that our words are not important, that we can speak what we think, we don't have to mean what we say or say what we mean. We can exaggerate, we can lie, we can make promises and break them, and it has no consequences. 
Do you see his strategy? Do you see how well he's been able in this generation to take men's authority without us even knowing about it? You know, there is a verse in Mark chapter 11 where Jesus is actually teaching us on authority. We all know that verse, Mark eleven twenty three. If anyone speaks to the mountain, command it to be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe, listen, believe that whatever he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And we use that scripture, and Jesus was teaching on authority, wasn't he? But did you notice what Jesus says? You will speak to the mountain and command it to be removed and do not doubt in your heart, but believe you must believe that whatever you says will be done. Yes. So we're like, yeah, I'm speaking to the mountain. Cancer, go. And we say, hallelujah. But let me ask you a question. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when you speak and say something, do you believe your words will be done? Pastor, I will be here at 5 o'clock to help you clean the church. Pastor, I promise you I'll be there at 5. And then come 4.30. Oh, man, there's my favorite football game. Oh, man, my girlfriend are calling me to go, go shopping with them. Don't look at me so innocent. <laughs> And so holy. <laughs> you see, the authority and integrity is linked together. Jesus said, you will speak to the mountain and command it to be removed. But do you believe that what you say will be done? I remember I was in Africa, in Ethiopia. And right there, there was a pastor who invited me to preach to his church. And he said, Sister Audrey, Sunday night, you know, I'd like you to preach in the church. I'll come and pick you up at 7. And I'm like, okay, pastor, so Sunday night, it's like 6.45. I'm all ready. My purse, my Bible, I'm waiting outside. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. Come. 7, nobody. 7.15, nobody. 7.30, no one. 7.45, no one. And I'm thinking, my goodness, I must have misunderstood. Maybe it was next week. So I'm on my way to go back inside the building, and I see the pastor coming. Sister Audrey, you ready? Hallelujah, it's going to be powerful tonight. And I look at pastor. I say, pastor, you told me you were coming at 7? Ah, you know, Sister Audrey, it's African time. And I go to South, I used to go to South America. Our oh, sister Audrey, it's Bolivian time or Colombian time or Peruvian time. And you know, I had to say, no, I don't. Because what we don't understand is like we said, oh, I will be here to pick you up at 7. But deep down we think we give ourselves, well, you know, 7.30, 7.45, who cares? No, no, we have to care. Because what comes out of our mouth, if it has no integrity and we don't like God, watch over our word to perform them, our words will lose their integrity and by that, we lose their authority. And then you speak to the mountain, and the mountain looks at you. Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> and then we don't understand. We get frustrated, not understand why are my words not working? Why is the mountain not moving? And so, like God, we have to honor what comes out of our mouth. Amen. We have not to fall into the devil's trap, but regain that authority and that integrity. Believe what we say, say what we believe. Mean what we say, say what we mean. Make a promise and keep it. And let God watch over our words to perform it. 
Now listen to those words. Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. Say, if a man vows a vow or swears an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that comes out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 15, verse 4. Who will dwell in my tent? Then the next verse says, those who fear God, and here is how you can know somebody really fears God, who keeps his promise even when it hurts and does not change. You got to be like God. When we make a promise, when we speak something, we've got to watch over it. Keep its integrity, even and especially when it hurts. Because so many times, we are in a generation where exaggeration is part of the culture. You know, we even call it evangelistically speaking. Isn't that a shame that in the body of Christ, we even have that term? Selah. Oh, yeah, there were thousands of people at my meeting. And there were maybe a few hundred. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's very easy to manipulate the truth. That's what I so appreciate about this ministry. It's a ministry of integrity. That's why it's a ministry that can be trusted, that is so powerful and has such an impact. And if we can understand that the impact that this ministry has, it is not because Brother Andrew has such favor and Brother Andrew is so smart and Brother Andrew, no, it's because he understood from a very young age that he had to walk in integrity. And it is that what you see right here everywhere, it's the result of a man walking in integrity. And so if we can, and I, you know, like I said, there was a time where our word was like gold. And we could, I give you my word. And it was, and our word was our influence, our impact, our relationship, our, you know, influence in, in business was linked to our integrity. Our reputation was linked to our integrity. But now it's like we have given ourselves that excuse that our words is just not that big of a deal. You see, and the enemy has convinced us and has been able to have us yield over our authority. Thank you, sister. I think I'm going to go right here. <laughs> I like that same verse in the complete Jewish Bible. It says, who will de- dwell in your tent? Those who fear Adonai, who hold to an oath no matter the cost. And let me tell you, sometimes it will cost you. Sometimes it will feel like, Your flesh will not like it. But once you understand that your impact in the spirit, your authority in the kingdom is linked to the integrity of your word, whatever it costs is not going to be that big of a deal. Because your integrity, you know, not long ago, my husband and I had to make some, you know, some decisions that were very costly. And I woke up one morning and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Audrey, he said, blessed are those who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. And all of a sudden, I just realized that we were about to make a mistake because we listened to a lawyer. And the Lord was showing me, Audrey, however money it's going to cost you, that's not important. What is important is your integrity. And it did, co- and it's costing. But you know, I'm thinking, money is money. It's just mammon. It's there to serve us. God, in like this, both can bring money back. But our integrity, it's ours to keep, to protect, to defend. Because the moment we lose that, we lose the impact we have in the kingdom. 
Amen. And I love what Jesus said. Oh, let me read you one more. Deuteronomy 23, 23. He said, you shall be careful to do what has passed your lips. For you have voluntarily, that's, I think it's in the ESV, the English Standard Version. I think that's what it is. But he said, you shall be careful to do what has passed your lips. For you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord. In another word, when we make a promise to a person, it is not just to a person we make a promise. The word says you are making it to the Lord. In the, you remember Hananiah and Sapphira? They lied to man. And what did Peter say? You did not lie to man. You lied to God. So we've got to see the impact in the spirit that when we lie, we exaggerate, we break our promises. It is not just towards man, but it's towards God. And I love yesterday, I was, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I was sitting in a class where Andrew was teaching. And he was talking about the importance of staying away like David with Bathsheba to really prepare our heart, to really protect our heart and prepare our heart to seek the Lord because we all have the potential to slip away like David did. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, and he was saying that when we do something, whether it's sin or whatever it is, it is really not to the world, to the people, but it's to, we are despising the Lord. And I believe that that can connect in this context, that when we lie, we exaggerate, we break our promises. It's one way we, we despise the Lord and we lose our authority, amen? So I, I believe, and you know for second year, you might be going for first year, whoever, whatever is your, your path from now on, I believe it is important to set our path on a course of integrity. And that's what Jesus said. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And listen, anything else than that is from the evil one. Amen. So this morning... I don't know why that is, but I feel such, such a resistance from you all. I don't know why, and I'm going to be honest and frank. I don't know if some of you are thinking, ah, we know that. Or some of you are thinking, oh, pff, give us something. I don't know what's going on, or maybe some of you are chewing, being faced with it, thinking, oh, my goodness. That's what I've been doing. Whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, we need to break that. Amen. And you know what I love about God is that with God, we, he, does, he knows our heart. He knows what we think, what we feel, what we say, what's going on on the inside. We can dupe him. We can put on, you know, a good front thinking, oh, God, look at me. No, he knows. And so the good thing about God is we can be so completely honest, authentic, transparent. What you see is what you get, and we need to be like that. And so if we hear this morning and we realize because you know, when I say that, I'm going to be honest with you. There was one day where the Lord confronted me with this. Because I had thought, like, you know, words just evaporate. It is really not an issue. It's not important. I can say what I, you know. And then when God confronted me and showed me, 
Yeah, you can speak to the mountain, command it to be removed, but the next step is you must believe that what you say will be done because I don't care what culture we are in. I don't care what age we're in. I don't know where we, what anybody has said because what I know is that culture is the culture of heaven. And the culture of heaven is the culture of truth and integrity. So this morning, we can be completely open, truthful, honest with ourselves, with God, with others. We don't have anything to prove. We don't have anything. But if we are here this morning and you feel like, you know what? I, di I did not realize I need to make a course correction. You know what I mean by that? That maybe, maybe that's something you knew and you kind of slipped back into the old ways. Or maybe you kind of followed the trend. But whichever your case might be, sometime we need to do those course corrections. So if you're here this morning and you realize, you know what, I need to do that. Because sometime I've been, you know, I've been exaggerating or maybe lying or maybe I said things that I didn't really mean and I made promises I didn't keep or whatever it is, and you said, you know what, I need to make a course correction. Would you raise your hand? Praise God. Amen. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your sincerity, for your authenticity. That's the first step. And so we are going to pray together. Amen. Because God, in this, in this time, I believe, like Andrew says, we've entered into a great awakening. And in order to walk in the power of God, to have an impact, we've got to be those kings and priests unto our God, walk in authority. And when we speak the name of Jesus, it moves. When we bind and when we, we command demons or whatever the case may be, it has to have an impact. So this morning... We're going to pray together, and here is the good news. This morning, as I shared that with you, and I know it, pro it was not, you know, a peanut butter message. <laughs> it was not those easy, ooh, I like it, let me run around the room kind of message. But I know it's a message that has completely helped me in my ministry to stay the course and to see God do mighty things. And he wants to do it through all of us. But the good news is the Bible says in Philippians 2.12, he said that it is the spirit that will give us the will, the desire. The, but then with the desire, with the decision, it will give us the power to do it. What do I mean by that? From the moment you see the truth and you make a decision to change the course, to make a little course correction, there will be a grace available that any time you are tempted or all of a sudden you are about to, to just move away from that path of integrity, the Holy Spirit will come and remind you of this morning and give you that grace. He will convince you of righteousness. You're better than that. You don't need to exaggerate. You don't need to, you don't need, you know what I'm talking about. And there will be a power release on your behalf. But let me say, sometime it might mean that you say something. You know, it has happened to me one time where I said something, and then I realized that was not the whole truth. That was kind of a little. <laughs> so you know what I had to do? I had to go to the person, ask them to forgive me, expose that, and it hurt. You're talking your pride, taking a little. But it's good. It needs to. Amen. But there will be a grace, a power available. And when you start moving in that and the Holy Spirit reminds you and you start changing, all of a sudden you're going to find without even thinking about it, you're going to be that person known for a person of her or his word. Amen. So this morning, let's just pray together. If you have raised your hand and you're like, I need to pray that 
stand with me. Let's just do that. No, if that does not concern you, just. Well, I can tell that was the right message. I understand why I was feeling such in the, you know, in my heart. No, ministers, you're going to realize that, that sometimes, some of you already know that. You've been, you are or have been in the ministry that sometimes you try to give, it's like trying to give spinach or broccoli to a little child. It goes, (laughs) (laughs) amen, but it's good. Father God, we just come before you and we worship you and we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Just repeat up to me, Father God, thank you for your truth. Thank you for opening my eyes. And today I choose to make a course correction. I declare that I had yielded my authority because I had yielded my integrity. So today, Lord, I take a stand against the enemy and I make a decision, and I speak it out. I will be a person of my word. I will say what I mean. I will mean what I say. I will keep my promises. I will not lie. I will not exaggerate. But I will be that person of integrity that you called me to be, so I can be that person of authority that you called me to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit. From now on, I give you the permission to remind me of this prayer, to stop me on my track, to interrupt me, to discipline me, to correct me, to, correct me. to, help, me. to help me. So today I thank you, Holy Spirit, you. for your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Congratulations. Hallelujah. Amen. You can sit down. Does the AV have the video now? Yes? You have it? Can you play it? Let's finish with a (laughs) pop. And put it loud.
I have some good friends from Quebec there speaking French right over here. I have another one. Uh, Eden, are you there? Any French speaking people? Yes. Hallelujah. But all of us, there is work to do, and God needs every one of us. So thank you for saying yes to the call. God bless you.